Are you one of those photographers who are always surprised when someone gets rid of a camera with two car slots for a camera with only one? Surely the peace of mind of a backup card overcomes any cosmetic or handling reasons to change a camera, right? Maybe you have experienced a memory card failure while on holiday, but thanks to a backup card in the second slot, your precious memories were not lost forever. And since then, you never shoot without both card slots in use. I'm always grateful when you share your experience and opinion in the comments under my videos. Uh, this video is inspired by one of you and your comment really made me think about my choices. Am I reckless, careless by taking too much unnecessary risk by preferring a one card slot camera like Leica CL over another one with two card slots like the X-Pro3? Should I reconsider my choices and use the X-Pro3 instead of Leica CL so I can always have a backup of my precious photographs? Or maybe I worry too much and all will be well? Let's talk about it. What I hear often is that photographers use one card slot to save RAW files and the other slot to backup JPEGs. This, in my opinion, is hardly a backup. I don't know how you, but every time I shoot into both RAW and JPEG, one of them never gets used. Even on a Fuji camera with one of my favorite film simulations. Either I want the full flexibility of RAW or I feel like JPEG is enough. Even when I have both, I never use both in the end. If I like a photo in JPEG straight out of the camera, why would I edit a RAW file of the same photograph? And it works the other way around as well. You get what I mean. Backup is a backup only when both car slots are saving identical data. Like with a computer hard drive, but um, I talked about it in my Synology NAS review, which I will link below. But let's say you like a camera that has only one card slot, or that's the only camera you can afford. Should you be worried? Here is what I think. Either you go nuts from worrying about losing your files, or you take that little risk. What life is without risk anyway? Just go out, enjoy taking photographs, and become organized and disciplined after getting back home. You connect your camera or a card reader to a computer, tablet, phone, a backup drive, you name it, there's so many options these days, and download all the files you took that day. Then you either format the card in your camera or, if there is still enough space, leave the photos there and continue using it the next time you take pictures. You can go even further and never delete any photo from your memory card and simply treat your cards as if they were a very long roll of film. Once full, it goes to a closet and becomes the last resort in the unlikely event when all other backup solutions fail. David Farkas from Red Dot Forum is doing it this way and I'm sure he is not alone. But what if you are still worried about a memory card failure between taking a photo and saving it on an external storage? Let's think about it. The two car slot options was not always here. Even professional digital cameras used to have only one slot for a memory card, often because the card was way too big and also the manufacturer needed to keep costs as low as possible. And lastly, nobody wanted a second card slot. But then the camera market got more and more competitive and manufacturers started running out of features they could add to new cameras and attract more customers. And here comes the second card slot. Suddenly, every camera without two card slots was mediocre and every gas-affected photographer had yet another reason for upgrading. Until Nikon came and changed to rhetoric. It was the mirrorless Z6 and Z7 cameras where they purposefully left the second slot and released these two highly advanced professional cameras with only one XQD card slot. They knew it would steer the corn waters of the camera world and so released a statement basically saying that the XQD card failure rate is so low they do not see a reason to add a second card slot in these cameras. And this is a company that prior to that had two card slots in the professional DSLRs. But maybe you are not using Nikon cameras and wonder if classic SD cards are also safe. Well, nothing is 100% safe, but if you buy from good companies and from a trusted source, I tend to think you will bring the risk of the card failure to an absolute minimum. As with anything else, you get what you pay for, so look at Lexar for example or the well-known SanDisk and buy them from a trusted source. 
chances are pretty high that you will be just fine. And I would even say that you are probably more likely to drop your camera into a river, have it stolen or lose it than experience failure of a high quality memory card that's been treated well and used as it's supposed to be. And even if it happens, there are always a number of ways you can try to restore your precious data at home for free using your computer and one of many online tutorials. As with any other data drive, files stored on a memory card don't just disappear and the recovery is usually a question of restoring a reading path for your computer. But that's for another video. And now I jinxed it and my SD cards will start failing one by one. So at least like this video and subscribe to make my day a little bit better. Don't forget to share your memory card failure experiences in the comments below. Have fun taking photos and I'll see you with the next one.